Okay, uh, my name is Jude Christian and I am directing Violet. Violet is a story, I guess, broadly about two things. Um, it's a story about a woman who, um, who lives in a world that is not quite the world that most of us live in now, but feels very much like a familiar amalgamation of a lot of components, a lot of aspects of, of the world that we live in now. Um, and she's a woman who feels, I guess, disconnected from her life. She feels that the society that she lives in gives her no freedom whatsoever, um, that the household that she lives in, the marriage that she lives in, gives her no freedom and appears increasingly designed to um, restrict her and, uh, yeah, shut down any instincts that she does have. Um, but ultimately she, live, she feels that she's living a life without joy um, and without hope and without aspiration and without, I guess, she feels that she's living a life which doesn't contain the feelings and sensations and ambitions that the people around her do. I think at the same time, she, she doesn't crave being other people. She's an individual um, who doesn't believe that everyone or else around her is living their lives in a way that's fulfilling or satisfying or just makes any sense whatsoever. I think what's really interesting about the, the piece is that Gender feels really strong in it. It's a society which is really rigidly defined. Um, there's a moment in which Violet's husband, Felix, states, you know, men work nine to five, women stay home, and they raise the children, and they do embroidery, uh, and they cook and clean and sew and feed the cats and the chickens. And um, Violet doesn't explicitly talk about womanhood. She and Laura, who's the other female character in the play, don't themselves have pro protracted conversations about the role of women, the restrictions placed on women, but it's incredibly clear. It's laid out to see in, in the work um, and in the actions uh, that all of them carry out in their daily lives. Um, and so I find Violet really exciting as a character because she's fully aware that womanhood and the lack of options that are given to her as a result of it is one facet of her existence. Um, but she doesn't she doesn't lean towards one narrow definition of what womanhood is. Um, she doesn't point towards the sexism of the society that she lives in as the sole comprehensive cause of all of her problems. It's part of that pattern. The actual, the actual approach of directing the piece has been hugely, hugely disrupted by the pandemic. Uh, and actually the point at which I and Rosie, the designer and Cecile, costume designer, came on board, um, we would have had very little time to, to work on the piece. And that, so that felt like an exciting process of throwing ourselves into it, um, at which point we all hit a brick wall. Um, and you know, the piece was postponed and postponed and postponed for a very long time. Um, so in some ways it feels, uh, uh, it feels sort of depressingly on point to be making something about the end of the world. There are also huge moments of stasis in the piece, actually, given that the characters are going through this massive crisis. There are moments where you really see that small scale domestic irritation. Uh, you see the dynamics that happen between couples when they have lived together for such a long time that the other person is wallpaper to them. Um, and that felt very locked down. Um, so yeah, I think there's something, I guess the piece as opera does beautifully and as Alice and Tom's work does beautifully, it holds the ginormous emotions that sit in ordinary people and ordinary actions. And so although the events of the piece are extraordinary, the apocalypse in Violet is, um, it's, it's not some giant planet careering towards the earth. It's quite a strange, un sort of literally ungraspable thing. There's time just falling out of time. Hours are just falling out of the day. Um, and so what you witness is the human behavior in response to that. Like there isn't a marauding zombie army. There's just, the, there's less and less time. And then eventually the sense that something is going to happen when the hours hit zero and we don't know what. Um, and so I guess post pandemic, when people have had to confront mortality, people have had to confront ginormous seismic societal changes. And, and I guess probably uh, quite rarely something that is in some form affecting 
everyone, whoever you are, um, to observe how people respond to that and to observe whether they shrink within themselves or they turn to um, familiar ritual or familiar hierarchical structures um, or whether they search for solutions or whether they take it as an opportunity to let an old familiar complex life fall away and face something new. Um, it feels like a very appropriate time for it, even though obviously it was written in a pre-pandemic world. This is the first full-length opera I've directed. Obviously it's, it's beautifully um, streamlined, it's four singers, um, and it's maybe about an hour and a half long. Uh, it's such a beautiful thing to direct. I mean, the, the story and the music and the way that Tom animates character and feeling and dialogue through music has just made it so exciting and working with singers who I think are you know are incredibly accomplished musicians and then are also beautifully generous performers has been really exciting. I think the main difference is um, I guess especially in comparison to new writing in theatre there are there are a lot of decisions about the nature of a scene that have been made through the composition process um, and I find that really exciting and actually really liberating. I think it's it's lovely having the clarity for all of us um, and it feels like there's still a brilliant process of discovery in that, in that we can say, okay, if this, if this moment is quite fragmented, if it, if it takes this person a long time to say this sentence, um, or if they're choosing to do something incredibly dynamic with it, what's the impetus behind that? And having Tom particularly in the room is great because sometimes he'll go, for me, that's because the moment really demanded this or the character really demanded this. Other times he'll go, I don't know, I just wanted to evoke this kind of atmosphere. Um, and so it feels really satisfying um, to be able to work with singers and to be able to have music and voice be such a huge component of the work.